in a second and we are now we are live hello everyone good afternoon my name is john moreno escobar i'm the executive director of the yp foundation i welcome you to my house here in broward county and i'm really excited to have an incredible group of professionals today with us we're going to allow three more minutes for individuals to join our webinar uh, online event, as we like to call it. Uh, today's topic is technical colleges, a uh, topic that sometimes doesn't get the attention that we all um, deserve as uh, organizations to give them because everything it's in the pipeline for colleges. But this COVID-19 has shown us the importance of post-secondary education and the alternatives that our kids, our young adults have after they finish their high school years. So for us, it's a really important conversation. We've been having a lot of attention around it. We had almost 100 people register for our event today, individuals from California all the way to Chicago, to New Jersey, to Connecticut, to New York, and here in our home state, Florida. Um, our attendees are a, a huge variation from uh, directors of programs, executive directors of other non-for-profits to seniors, juniors, and sophomore students in our high schools in the United States. So we are extremely excited. I also want to give a big shout out to Escoyer, which is an organization that it's been working with us to promote our webinars. Escoyer is a platform that helps counselors to um, to enroll students in colleges, but now hopefully soon will help us also enrolling students in technical education institutions like the ones that we are going to explore today. So again, welcome to uh, our webinar here with the YB Foundation and we will be started in two minutes. So please um, hold tight and uh, we will just keep having people rolling in into our life. Thank you so much. Also, before we start, you you have a chat box on the top right hand side of your screen. Please make sure that you're using the two tabs. One which has the question mark is for Q&A. At the end of this panel, we will have a Q&A session with our incredible speakers, panelists, and then um, if you want to introduce yourself or want to tell us where you are joining us from, make sure that you're using the chat box, which is different. It's the one that looks like a text message box on the right top hand side of your screen. Um, we will start in, in one minute, so we appreciate everyone just holding tight as we get more people to roll in into our life. Thank you. And don't worry, it's not liquor, it's water. This is not a happy hour life. <laughs> um, hey, my panelists smile. I love I love when people smile. I think that's where people show their true selves. All right, it's 305, so we're going to start. Uh, also because um, I know we all have extremely tight uh, schedules. Uh, I know there was a little bit of traffic happening in the internet today, so we will get people to park their computers and laptops or iPads and get to our um, into our online event. So welcome everyone again. My name is John Moreno Escobar. I am the executive director of the YB Foundation and we have a, um, a small presentation that we want to show you before we start our incredible event today. So again, and before I, I, I do this, I want to I want to apologize if we get a little bit of technical glitches today, but we're trying a new platform with MS Teams, and I want to make sure that we are, uh, you know, um, working the best, the best possible with our system today. Um, so we are going to send you, and this is working perfectly. So again, thank you so much for your time today. My name is John Moreno Escobar. I'm the executive director of the YB Foundation. Uh, our mission is to reinvent education 
Our Instagram handle is at YV underscore foundation. And on Facebook, we are at at YV foundation. So if you want to learn more about our programs and about what we do and with our youth in New York City or here in the state of Florida, please follow us on any of our social media channels or join our website, which is really easy. It's www.ybfoundation.com. What is our experience um, and our partners? We've been partnering with a lot of organizations around the country, but our biggest partnership is with the New York City Department of Education uh, in New York City, which is the largest school district in the country with 1.2 million students in their system. We serve here in Florida and in New York around 30 high schools, uh, 30 plus high schools and middle schools, more in New York than here in Florida to be completely transparent. We serve more than a thousand students around uh, our programming and we are excited uh, to really have our program now in South Florida as well. Um, we created uh, before COVID-19 a program called the Whole Person Program and we wanted just to share with you what we do. It's a multi-year, multi-subject program that provides support for the students beyond high school. Really similar to what we're doing today, but in the classroom. Unfortunately, because of COVID-19, we're doing a lot of our work remote. It's a two-year minimum commitment for the students. And during those two years, either, either the first year, second year, third year, or fourth year, uh, we try to connect with the students in different ways. Um, and we also create an alumni network after they graduate from high school. This whole person program, it's, um, it's, it's, it works around the six areas of development that we believe every single individual in this society should have. Uh, one, it's uh, creating the best version of the students, making sure that they understand how to build wealth, how to master technology, how to understand the real world, how to beat the system, which is more civics, and also how to be unstoppable, or what we call here at the foundation, creating a superhuman. All this is possible because of our methodology, like what we're doing today. We're gonna to learn about a topic. We're going to apply that topic. Hopefully you guys learn about the technical colleges and then go to their websites, look about the importance of technical education, and maybe enroll yourself or enroll your, your kids or siblings or family members in technical colleges around the country and hopefully here in Broward County as well. And then we will reflect, which is our Q&A for this purpose today. This is the matrix of our topic. So we have many topics in our, in our matrix, but what we try to do during this COVID-19 was to really give a snapshots snapshots of our topic. So we had a webinar or an online event about mindfulness. We have in today one about technical colleges. Last uh, week we had one of, around aviation and our last webinar, which I will share in a minute, the information is going to be around LinkedIn, which is a platform. Maybe you guys are not been living in the moon, but it's a really important platform that we have uh, for our students. Then how we transform our students, we increase attendance, we increase engagement and we decrease disciplinary incidents in the schools. I'm just gonna really breeze and pass uh, on this, which is an online learning program that is focused on college access. Uh, if any of you are working with the students, uh, they are first generation that are um, college readiness or college culture engaged. Please let us know if we have an incredible program that we are um, promoting in, in these in this days um, after COVID-19. Also, as I mentioned before, our last event of the month, I uh, mean, of the series that we have during this school year, it's uh, LinkedIn for Dummies. It's open to your staff members, to your youth, to your friends, to your family members. Please make sure that you are um, sharing this event uh, with your networks. Uh, it's, uh, we're gonna have a special speaker, Paola Vargas, which is a person who has been working on this for many, many years. Again, it's next, Thursday, June 4th at 3 p.m. Okay, wow. I should get an award for this. Um, this is it, this is today. For years, many people believed that graduating from an accredited four-year college or university was the only path to a successful career with the perception that a higher degree equaled a higher salary. Now, with the ever-increasing cost of a four-year college degree, many millennials and Gen Zs are facing record levels of student debt, which is compounded further by unemployment and underemployment. In fact, student loan debt numbers are soaring, 
As of 2018, a total of 44.2 million borrowers owe over $1.5 trillion in student debt. The average student debt for a bachelor's degree was $29,800, making student loan debt the biggest source of debt over vehicle and even credit card debt. With the pressures of attending a traditional four-year university, nearly 50% of students drop out of school before completion due to the lack of adequate preparation, occupational focus, and or not being emotionally equipped to succeed in this type of learning environment. It is evident that having a four-year degree does not ensure prosperity. Students are now realizing that there are plenty of career opportunities that do not require a degree from a four-year college or university. Trained workers with technical skills have a whole new place in our tech-driven and skill-driven job market. In fact, 83% of companies report that they are currently experiencing a shortage of skilled laborers. Currently, the job ratio in our economy is one to two to seven which shows that for every one career that requires a master's degree or higher, two professional jobs require a four-year degree and seven jobs require a one-year certification or two-year degree. It's because of these major factors that career and technical education or CTE is now in the national spotlight. With CTE, prospective students are able to become certified and trained professionals ready to fulfill job roles for the services that we all rely on. Atlantic Technical College, McFadder Technical College, and Sheridan Technical College make up the Broward Technical Colleges and are part of Broward County Public Schools, providing quality CTE at an affordable price for over 50 years. At each campus, they train students to get their credentials to join the workforce quickly to help fill one of the millions of available jobs. Broward Technical Colleges are fully accredited with state licensed and certified instructors, industry professionals, and state-of-the-art classrooms. Students get real hands-on training and experience for a rewarding career doing something they love. Broward Technical Colleges are supported by tax dollars, which means that tuition is just a small fraction of the cost of a two or four year public or private college. So students graduate with little or no student loans, giving them a better start for their futures. Training is available at five locations around Broward County. Atlantic Technical College in Coconut Creek in Fort Lauderdale, McFadder Technical College in Davie, and Sheridan Technical College in Hollywood and Pembroke Pines. Students can choose from a range of career options through 69 programs, most of which can be completed within a 12 month period. So graduates are able to have a career in a year. Careers in fields that include construction, transportation in fields such as automotive, marine and aviation, healthcare, IT, business, communication arts and hospitality. Getting the education is only half the job though. Broward Technical College's graduates benefit from a full-time staff to help with transitioning from training to career. With 10 million jobs needing to be filled by 2020, Broward Technical Colleges provide a career-focused education, training our students of today for a successful tomorrow. Training for a future career starts now at Atlantic, McFadder, and Sheridan Technical Colleges. John, I'm back. Thank you, Lynn. Now I know. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. We had some um, connection. I'm glad that you're back. So, hey, this video is incredible. And I, I before we start our panel, um, I wanted to thank Lynn Goldman for her, you know, for her vision to really help the foundation and the technical colleges um, put this together. So thank you so much, Lynn. And, and Lynn Goldman is the Community Relations Coordinator uh, of Broward Technical Colleges and Technical High School, Atlantic, Mathadder, and Sheridan. Uh, we also have Maude Eugene, which is <clears throat> Sheridan Technical College Director of Office of the Student Affairs. Uh, we have Jennifer Long in our panel as well today, Alumni Association Coordinator from Broward Technical Colleges. Atlantic, my pattern, and Sheridan, and Nicole Willis, which is um, the Career Service Advisor for Business and Economic Development at Atlantica Technical College and Technical High School. So thank you, thank you all of you for being um, so open to doing this event and for being here today and for practicing a million times this panel before you went live. So thank you for, 
for your time today and welcome to our panel. You guys could say something, Lynn. Uh, we're glad to be here. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you so much. Awesome. So um, the way that we're going to do this for everyone who is joining our live event, uh, we have a, a, a really a trigger question to our individuals here, to our panelists here. And those questions are going to lead us into a presentation from each one of them. And the first person that we're going to have in, 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 in the live uh, as a panelist is Lynn. And, and Lynn, of course, has tremendous experience working with the community. And she, I don't know who doesn't know Lynn in our community. Uh, she's been around for a long time and she was one of my mentors when I had my time working for the Broward County Public School System. So Lynn, welcome to our panel. And I hope uh, you're not nervous anymore because you're here presenting. <laughs> and uh, really the, the leading questions uh, to your presentation are, uh, why is technical education a smart choice? And what makes the Broward Technical Colleges an excellent choice for career training? Well, thank you, John, and, and I want to thank you for acknowledging and supporting the role that technical colleges and career training plays in the workforce. And I'm going to make a statement up front. I've had a lot of technology problems today. I keep cutting out, so I'm really hoping that I, I can stay with this through this entire presentation. So why are, why are technical colleges a, a good choice? Well, it helps people follow their passion and, and get a skill where they can grow that passion without investing a lot of time or money in what um, may be a four or five year degree. I'm going to give you some statistics on that. So what we train for at the Broward Technical Colleges are high skill, high wage careers. And the state tells us what we can actually train for. And if it doesn't meet a certain entry criteria, the state does not allow us to train in those programs, ensuring that we're not wasting state dollars, tax dollars, in making sure that we train students in what we now know are essential jobs. So much of um, what we've learned or I, I personally learned through this COVID crisis is that a lot of the jobs that we train for are essential. The um, HV, the, the air conditioning guy did not lose work, the plumber, the electrician, the students who have been trained in healthcare, in commercial vehicle driving and automotive technology and so on and so forth, they have kept working. Mike Rowe, who many of you are familiar with in Dirty Jobs, uh, recently made a commencement speech and I'm going to quote him a few times, but one of the things that he said was all work is noble. Some jobs are just more secure than others and those are pretty much the jobs that we train for. There are over 30 million jobs in the United States that pay an average of $55,000 a year that do not require a bachelor's degree and that information came from the George Washington University Center for Education and Workforce. We also have apprenticeship programs here in Broward, in Broward County. Atlantic Technical College is the largest apprenticeship program in the state of Florida. And what that means for people is you earn while you learn. Um, we have internship opportunities at the three colleges where you students can also earn while they learn, but the apprenticeship programs are done up at Atlantic. So, People might be asking, what does it cost to go? Well, most of our programs, the overwhelming majority of our programs are under $5,000 totally inclusive. So that means little or no debt. And Maude, um, Ms. Eugene is gonna speak about how students enroll and how they learn about financial aid, but I wanted to share that information. The video you just saw addressed the fact that there was, it said 1.5, it's now $1.6 trillion in student debt that students have coming out of the university system. And as you can see, 50% of students who enroll in college wind up dropping out. And after graduation, one third of them are working in jobs that do not require that degree. And after five years, 50% of them are still what is classified as underemployed. So college costs have gone up eight times faster than wages since the 1980s. And it's something that universities are really having to grapple with. Please understand, I'm not saying university is not where to go. There are lots of reasons to go to university. What I'm saying is get along the path. 
There are lots of entry and exit ways along the road to success. And the technical colleges have proven to be a great way to start your career. Even if it's a career that you want to go into, for instance, you want to go into dentistry. Well, if you come to us and you are in the dental lab program, you're working within your industry. If you want to become a pharmacist and you start with us and you're in a pharmacy tech program or pharmacy hygiene program, you are you are working your way into the career so that when you get to university, you are actually able to earn a a good living while you're there and you're working you're working hard in that industry and making your contacts already. So having the student debt, what does it mean? It stops you from buying a home from a car. And if you're entrepreneurial, it stops you from opening your business. So we like to think that many of our students, it's not about working for the um, air conditioning company, it's owning the air conditioning company. And as one of my colleagues at Broward College often says, students pick majors and mascots they want to be a Gator, they want to be a Knoll, they want to be a Knight, instead of considering a, tr a real trade. John, can you flip to the next slide for me? So who are the Broward Technical Colleges? Uh, we are part of the state education workforce system. There are 49 such institutions in the state of Florida. Broward has three of the largest. Um, and we enroll over 20,000 students a year between the three colleges. We also encompass the Broward Fire Academy. Most people do not, um, do not know that. What sets the Broward Technical Colleges apart from some of what I call TV colleges is the cost. I mentioned most programs are under $5,000. Some of that aligns to there are some for-profit institutions, for instance, with our culinary program that are charging $76,000 or for a medical assisting program that are charging over 33,000 or an automotive tech program over 45,000. Equate that to the under 5,000 that we have. We are also a part of a state initiative called Career in a Year. And what that means is that we trade, train you for a high skill, high wage, high demand job for under $5,000 in less than a calendar year. So that means you're out working, you're earning dollars right away. Oftentimes while your friends or people you grew up with, perhaps your neighbors are still in school accruing debt and you're out there earning money. So we have lots of good reasons to come to the technical colleges. We hope that you consider us. Um, our website is along the bottom, BrowardTechnicalColleges.com, and that links you to any one of the colleges, and you can see our which programs are offered on which campus. We do have eight campuses throughout Broward County, from the very top of Broward all the way to the south end of the county. Um, and all of our teachers are accredited. That's a big deal as well, because when you go to some of these for-profit schools, not all of the teachers are accredited, not all of the programs are accredited. And then when you get out, aside from having debt, you may not actually be able to get a job. So there, those of you who've been in South Florida a long time, there used to be a company ca called Sims, and their tagline was an educated consumer is their best customer. And I say that to you, do your homework. Check to see what school you're looking to enroll in. Are they accredited and who are they accredited by? Because the Lynn Goldman Accrediting Agency will not help you. You need to be properly accredited so that you can get the job of your dreams. Thank you, John. Thank you, Lynn. And, and, and I'm impressed by um, the statistic of 30% of all Florida's apprenticeships are done in Broward. So I'm really proud to be a Broward resident because I know how important our apprenticeships and I mentioned to you that I had a conversation with another executive director of the Association of um, Electricians here in, in, in Florida, and she completely testified to, to, to your statement around you know, jobs. And, and she said, I'm hiring people. I hire 100 people in the last two months because uh, there's just not enough individuals with electrician background uh, or a certification. So definitely the need is there. And now after COVID-19, I think these careers are definitely going to spark more opportunities for individuals to move into the economy as 
as we transition into the new normal. So thank you, Lynn, for the I'd information. I'd like to just add one thing that is on the yep. slide that I did not mention, and that is for four years in a row, the Broward Technical College has mm. awarded more industry certifications than anybody else in the state. And that's huge because that says that the individual employers um, and the associations and industries are looking for people who meet their criteria. So four years in a row, we outpaced everybody and we outpaced by significant numbers. Awesome, awesome. That's a that's a great um, a great other another area to look into because I think that you guys drive uh, important conversations into the workforce. Um, now um, we have uh, Maud Eugene. Um, she, as I mentioned before, is the Sheridan Technical College Director Office of the Student Affairs. And and you know I guess many of our guests today, uh, Maud, are are really thinking about okay so. Uh, Lynn told us that you guys are the best, right? But uh, now how uh, I get into uh, the the technical colleges, how I pay for it, which is also another part of your presentation uh, today. Uh, we we have our kids bombarded with information about how to prepare, how to pay, how to apply for a college degree. But I think that we don't do enough to inform them about how to prepare, how to apply, and how to pay for a technical college like the three colleges here in Broward. So the floor is yours, Maud, and if you could elaborate on those two questions. How is the admission process and how uh, is the financial aid process for the students who want to apply or young adults that want to apply to the institutions? Sure, thank you all for, for having us. Um, I will be speaking uh, in general for McFadder, Atlantic, and Sheridan Technical Colleges. Um, there are some overlaps in the general admissions um, criteria. However, you would want to contact each individual school for the exact steps for enrollment. However, in each school, you'll have the following that I will discuss will be consistent on all, in all three campuses. So there are three main things that you want to take into account when you are applying for admissions. Any program, first of all, any program that we have that is 450 hours or more, students will have to meet what we call a basic skills requirement. For you all who are graduating from high school from a state public school, as long as you have your standard high school diploma and you started ninth grade um, in a Florida school and earned your diploma from a Florida public school, you will be exempt from that requirement. So all you would have to do is provide your program counselor with your um, uh, uh, transcript and that would exempt you from the basic skills requirement. Now, for some odd reason, if you don't meet the, that exemption, we do have other exceptions to that rule. Um, however, if you don't meet those, then we do have a TABE test, TABE and CASAS test that we do administer and there are cut scores for that. Now, the good news about it is many of our programs, even if you have not met the basic skills requirement, you can still enter our programs, attend classes while you're working on remediation classes that will help you meet the basic skills uh, requirement for your program. But the basic skills are definitely important because at the end of your program, we would need that to be complete to issue you your program certificate. But we do provide assistance along the way for you to meet that criteria. So I do want you all to know about the basic skills. That is a big part of um, the admissions process. The second thing is Florida residency. Being that we are a Florida public school, it is very important that all of our students complete the Florida residency affidavit application. So with all um, Florida public schools, whether you're going to University of Florida or you're going to Broward College, we all are mandated by the state of Florida for students to prove that they have lived in the state of Florida or considered Florida residents for tuition purposes for 12 months prom, uh, prior to the start of their term. So for example, um, if I've been living in the state of Florida but I have no proof, I don't have a driver's license or no proof showing that I was a Florida resident, for the sake of Florida residency for tuition purposes, I would be considered an out-of-state student. So it's very important not only that you've lived here, but you're able to prove that you've lived here so that we would charge you a reduced rate for tuition. So for example, if for example, our culinary program was $3,000 for in-state student, 
an out-of-state student will would look at close to an eight thousand dollar bill if they weren't able to prove florida residency so that is very important that you are able to prove that and any student that is under the age of 24 you would have to use your parent or legal guardians um, information in order to pr prove Florida residency. Unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to claim it on your own. So that's definitely a key thing is to make sure you're completing your paperwork for Florida residency and proof that we accept. We accept driver's licenses, um, vehicle registrations, voters registration. So there's we we each school has the same list of uh, accepted items. And so your program counselor would be able to provide that to you as well. Now, you will get all this information at orientation. That's what I, I actually should have started with orientation. So the first step would be for you to attend orientation and you would go to your in the school specific website that you're interested in and it would give you information on how to register for orientation. Currently, as we are all working remotely, um, each school it has is doing online orientation, so that information is available at our respective websites uh, for you to register for orientation. So please don't delay, go right away and start uh, orientation because that is step one in the admissions process and you want to get that out the way so you can start processing all your other paperwork uh, to get ready for the next term that you're interested in registering for. And we are registering for the June 4th um, class for summer. So please, if you are interested, please sign up for orientation at our respective website. Awesome. So those would be the three, three main things um, would be orientation, you're completing your basic skills and Florida residency. Um, one thing I do want to notate is because we are all working remotely and schools are closed, right now we cannot administ administer our TABE and CASAS test for, uh, for basic skills. But that doesn't mean you cannot register. We are still processing students for um, classes and we would be able to test you once we return back to campus um, to on campus um, services. OK, so that would be the admissions process. Now the second piece is the payment options. We are proud that none, we can proudly say that none of our students will ever leave any of our technical schools with a student loan. We only administer uh, federal funds that are in the form of Pell, FSEOG, uh, and those are all grants. And grants are funds that you do not have to pay back. So you won't have to ever worry about owing a student loan on our behalf. And we are very proud of that because not only are our programs cost effective, but we also offer aid that does not put our students into debt. And if anyone does not qualify for federal student aid, we do have state aid that we also are able to assist our students with. So we do have many different payment options that assist students. We do accept Bright Future Scholarship, Florida Prepaid, um, and outside third party scholarships as well. In addition to working with agencies like Career Source Broward, where they do give agency vouchers, voc rehab, and students come from all over with different agency vouchers and we do accept those as well for payment. Uh, one thing that is very important, if, especially if you're applying for financial aid, is you understand the financial aid process. So your first step would be to create an FSA ID. That is how you're going to sign for your application, your financial aid application online. So it's a very, it's a password protective ID that only you are to have. Now, if you are under the age of 24, your parent would also need to um, be included on your FAFSA application. So your parent or legal guardian also has to have a, um, an FSA ID. So they would create their own. So that's how both of you would sign the FAFSA application. Be sure when you are completing the application that you do uh, link your taxes from the IRS's website to the application. There is an option on the application to do that, and that would help minimize the amount of errors that's completed on the application, and it would save you having to enter all that information manually. So definitely create one, creating the FSA ID, and the next thing is completing the actual FAFSA application. Once that is completed, 
It usually takes about five to seven uh, days for us as a um, school, whether it's at Atlantic, uh, McFadder, or Sheridan, to receive that application. So be sure after you've completed that process and you've waited the five to seven uh, period, a day period to contact a financial aid office for us to be able to process your application for you. So after that, then they'll be able to, a financial aid advisor would be able to inform you whether you qualify for aid or not and how much aid you do qualify for. Okay. That's awesome. So uh, pretty much, uh, Maude, and I know this is maybe uh, one of the biggest um, topics for our, our families, not just here in Florida, but around the country. It's that many people didn't or don't know that the process is pretty similar when it comes into, you have to file the FAFSA, right? Yes. So a lot of efforts around the country on kids um, and young adults to fill the FAFSA. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that the, that first step, which opens the door for financial aid is the same for technical colleges. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I'm glad that you really broke it down in pieces. So thank you so much for, for introducing us to, to how to get admitted um, and how to pay for it. And the biggest news, I guess, it's that none, if I heard wrong, please correct me, none of the students that graduate uh, from your schools um, are involved in, in loans. So they yeah. don't have any debt. That is huge. That is huge. Um, I don't know if... Um, the, the individuals who are hearing this are really taking in consideration this no loans you know it is big i i went through college in new york and i still have a small loan but i did got a loan even a really small one for me to hear and i guess for everyone who's hearing this that no loans after you graduate in these times is just a huge huge add-on to to um to being involved with technical colleges so thank you for sharing that with us Mark. um Right. And again, if anyone has questions, remember just uh, so I stop here before we go into the next two panelists. We have a box on the top right hand side of the screen uh, where ha the, the, the box has a, um, a, a question mark there. You could add your questions and we will make sure that uh, all our panelists at the end uh, get to answer the questions that are directed to them. Please make sure that you mention to whom is going to question or if it's a question in general for for the whole panel. Um, all right, so now we're going to move to our next person, our next uh, panelist, um, Nicole Willis. Uh, hey, Nicole, how are you doing? Are you, um, are you ready? Great. <laughs> Thanks uh, for having us. Of course, of course. So, Nicole, um, you are a career service advisor, and really what we want to talk about, which is something that I believe is specifically here in South Florida, it's, it's, a, it's a topic that we've been talking for many years which is the transition, right? So is this a skill gap report that was made, um, that was uh, done by JP Morgan Chase uh, about the, the gap that is between our educational system and our careers and our jobs. And, and that is what you do. You kind of connect those two bridges. And we have two leading questions for you. One is, what are some of the Florida high growth industries projected to be in need of new employees? Um, and uh, what do companies look for when hiring new employees uh, and how the technical colleges are uh, really meeting those needs? Okay, well, again, thank you so much for having us. I'm excited to be here with everyone and to talk about these topics. Um, as a segue into discussing um, these high growth industries, I do want to kind of touch upon career planning as a part of the process. Um, there may be some folks out there who are unsure of what you want to do right now. Um, so, you know, you really, you, you've got to know yourself. And I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not seeing the presentation. Uh, yep, it's, it's okay. okay. All right, excellent. So, you know, you're hearing all these great things about what Broward Technical Colleges does, but you may not know exactly what career you want to get into. So again, you, you have to kind of assess yourself. You have to uh, be aware of what your strengths are, what your values are, what your personality is like, um, you know, what type of work environment you want to work in. Um, not every work environment is for everyone, okay? So you really need to do your research into careers, okay? 
Uh, so research is very important, not not only for choosing a career, but also choosing a job and employer. OK, um, so once you know yourself, you do your research, um, then you know you have to decide, OK, what kind of training do I need? The website that I have on the screen there is floridashines.org and it provides a career, a career planning tool. You know, we see students come in who need to take career assessments first to help them make these decisions, either, you know, to assess their career interests, work environment, likes and dislikes, things of that nature. So I do suggest definitely tuning in to floridashines.org. Um, in your home high schools, I'm sure you're familiar with Naviance already. Through Naviance, you can also take um, career assessments. So John, I am ready for the next slide. Go. OK, thank you. So what are uh, some of the top industries in South Florida? Um, along the right hand side of the screen, they're listed here. Aviation and aer aerospace, construction, healthcare, life sciences, hospitality and tourism, information technology, manufacturing, marine and retail. Now I will say, since we've been going through um, the situation we're in now with COVID-19, you know, demand fluctuates, OK? So some of the industries, because things were closed, uh, the demand went down. But now that we're reopening, the demand will start to rise again. And the demand is based on, you know, the demand for services, which will translate into the number of jobs. Now, the average salary for all of these um, industries range anywhere on the lower end from $25,000 to over $100,000 per year, OK? Um, now, you know, a couple of industries are on the lower on the lower end, but most of these industries, you know, the average um, salary would be fifty thousand, forty five thousand dollars. OK, now the thing to remember, too, is, you know, as an entry level employee, you know, your salary is not going to be at the top of the range right away. OK, the longer you stay in your career, the more earning potential you, that you will have. The website that I have listed on the screen is an excellent one. It's called ONET Online. And ONET Online is a tool for career exploration and job analysis. Um, it's used by students, it's used by uh, HR, human resources, I should say. It's used by workforce professionals. And within ONETonline.org, you can research all of these different career paths. You can see what type of education you need. You can see what the uh, entry level uh, average wage earnings are for different states. OK, so it's a tool that I, I use on a regular basis. And when I work with students, I definitely you know, suggest they use it as well. Um, so again, with all these industries, I do want to say this. Sometimes we look at these industries, for example, construction, and we think automatically um, air conditioning, um, electricity, which which yes, those are part of construction. But you have to think outside the box in terms of these industries also. All of the companies in these industries need various type of employees. So all these industries also need IT, okay, information technology, the folks who work with our computers and keep us running, okay? They need office workers. Uh, so, you know, bookkeepers, they need front desk people, they need, uh, you know, executive assistants. So you, you have to think on a, on a larger scale in regards to the jobs that you can actually get. Don't be limited, OK? I think I'm, I'm ready for the next slide. And just to brag about our foundation, <laughs> we had an event around the aviation industry, and we are looking forward to have more around the other industries. So uh, this is great information. Thank you. OK, you're very welcome. All right, so this is, this is the area that I work in. I work with students for jobs, OK? So what do these companies, what, what are they looking for when hiring? They're looking for folks who have the hands-on skills, which is what we train for. So when we say hands-on skills, you know, our programs prepare our students to be able to start working on day one. And of course, once they're on the job, they'll get additional training through those employers, but they can pick up right away because they have done everything while in class. The other thing employers are looking for are Employ employees who have the right certifications and licenses. Um, Lynn has already stated that uh, the BTCs were number one in the state for our number of certifications that our students receive. So these certifications and licenses are either required just to get the job or they may just make you more marketable. 
and we encourage all of our students to get those certifications and licenses regardless of if they're mandatory or not okay it's, it's to your benefit to have them and put on your resume some of the other skills uh, which we call soft skills are time management digital literacy if you think about what we're going through right now uh, working virtually, having virtual classes. This is a skill that I'm sure, you know, will increase in need. Critical thinking and problem solving, flexibility and initiative. We're all being flexible right now because things have changed for us, okay? We have to go with the flow, roll with the punches, right? Teamwork, communication, and emotional intelligence. When I get calls from companies, really the first thing they say is, you know, we want to hire all around good people who just want to show up to work, who can get along with other people, who can make some decisions on their own. Um, so if you have a weakness in any of these areas, now's the time to work on them. And once you get to, um, if you choose the Broward Technical Colleges, we assist you. Um, the teachers, our counselors, and the advisors, uh, we work with you on, you know, pinpointing, you know, where you may need a little assistance in these areas. And of course, the training uh, prov provides you a lot of help in building the strength in these areas as well. And these skills are needed across all industries, all employers. This is this is so important because I think that um, a lot of our youth are sometimes are so excited about getting into a career or getting into a college or into a post-secondary option. And they sometimes don't have this uh, structure that you guys bring with your office, which is where are you going? What do you need in order to be successful? And, and if you do a career in 12 months, if you do a career in 18 months or, or more, uh, you know, I think this is critical for the success of our youth. So this is, again, incredible information, again, incredible insight of what what is the what are the industries? What are the salaries? And also the skills. A lot of people miss this, uh, soft skills and life skills. Um, we do a lot of that in our foundation uh, with our new program, as you guys saw on the introduction of the uh, webinar. So, hey, we are we are really glad to have this information handy for our attendees. Um, thank you, Nicole. May I add one thing? I forgot sure, something. Sure. Uh -huh. At all three tech colleges, we have excellent career centers. So as a part of the services that the students receive is that they can get assistance with resume development, interview skills. We have employers that come onto the campuses along with the teachers who bring employers into their classrooms. And, um, you know, we have recruiting events, job fairs and all that. So we understand that when people go back to school, it's all about getting that career. So we are right. definitely there to assist them. Right, Thank you. Sure. Um, now we have Jennifer Long. Um, which I believe it's uh, kind of like the, you know, you have the process, you have uh, the intensity, the, the hardship, you go through college, you go through technical colleges, you go through your post-secondary option, and then you become an alumni. And, and you know, I graduated personally from our community college and then from a, from a four-year college. And, you know, I, I give back and, and I share my story because that is just what everyone should do as an alumni. But I think that what Jennifer does is so critical for really showcasing the importance of an institution, in, in this case, the technical colleges, because now you could reflect and said, what is this alumni network about and how I could become part of this community that will support me through my years after my, my formal education. So Jennifer, thank you for attending this webinar. And and you know we have really complex questions for you. Not just kidding. Um, <laughs> we have we have a couple of, of good questions to start you off on your presentation. One is um, about the flexibility and the variety of of paths that alumni have been taken as they attend technical colleges, specifically here at Broward, and how they you know what happened with them after they completed their degrees, right? Um, and as I was mentioning at the beginning during your introduction, what are the opportunities for those alumni? The, I, I, I have learned through this process of putting this together that your alumni network is really active. Um, how they start their own business, how they have support in starting their own business. Uh, if you could tell us that at the end of the presentation, that would be great. So welcome to our panel and, and go ahead. Great, thank you so much, John, for including me on this. Um, one thing that I love about my job 
is that I get to talk about all these wonderful success stories that we have at the schools. So I'm going to share three stories um, of some of our alumni, but we have so many more that it could take an entire presentation all on its own. Uh, different students come to us from different paths and in different ways, and they continue on afterwards to do some pretty amazing things. One student that I'd like to introduce everybody to is Stanley Lacoste, and he came to McFadder after graduating high school in 2012. He didn't go directly to McFadder. He didn't come to us until 2018. He went to work and he was in sales and human resources and, you know, doing his thing, he realized that one of the big high demand pieces that he saw that he had an interest in was IT. So he thought to himself, I think I'm going to go back to school now. And he started at network support at McFadder, which was a great choice for him, taking a break and really doing what Nicole Willis had said before, assessing yourself, looking at what your passion is and finding out what it is that you want to continue doing. Because he took that time, he was able to really get through that program so successfully with all A's, he did an amazing job. And before completing his actual full program, he had accomplished several certifications that enabled him, it, these are industry certifications, and they enabled him to land a job with the US Department of Agriculture, which oddly enough, had an office very close by to McFadder. So he could actually work and complete his certification and his program at the same time. In the end, he decided that he would afterwards re-enroll and go for a second program. So now he is completing his second program in cybersecurity. All the while he's been employed with a high demand, high paying job. So he will leave us with two, certif well, multiple certifications, but two programs completed and be launched off onto an even larger career path, which I can't wait to get an update from him and find out where he goes. The second person I'd like you to meet is Isis Prieto. She was one of our Sheridan Share Time students. She actually went to Hollywood Hills High School and she did Share Time in Culinary Arts. While she was at Sheridan, she also had the opportunity to compete with Skills USA. Skills USA is a huge competition. It's um, national and she made it all the way to nationals and she took home the gold and that was in 2018-2019 she took home the gold and she also got a four-year scholarship to the culinary institute of america now isis is an amazing student she really thought that doing a program at the same time as she completed high school was perfect for her because she thought she would go directly to work. She didn't really think she was going to be able to go to college afterwards. However, the opportunities that were afforded to her while she was at Sheridan were amazing and they launched her off to this wonderful career that she'll have after she completes Culinary Institute of America and a full scholarship to boot. The last person that I would like you to meet is Dr. Yamalette Williams. Now, Dr. Yamalette, she came to us after high school. She, did, she started college and then she stopped and came and did a degree um, a program in drafting. So she was in drafting, completed that, and ended up working for the Broward County Public Schools while she decided to continue on again for more more education after she had gotten her bachelor's she came back to mcfadder and ended up teaching in business management and technologies there and after that she continued on again to finish up with a phd in education so she now currently is an entrepreneur so she does 
career coaching, and she also does entrepreneurship coaching. And that's one of the things that I know you asked me about. So if we go to the next slide, I can tell you more that with an alumni association and with a good career services department, we have a lot of students that decide after a period of time in industry that they want to open up their own business. So with the right networking and the right connections, you certainly can do that. We have different platforms that we invest in that will help our students promote their business. One of them is Broward Tech Connect, which you see the little um, kind of web view of it up there right now, where all of our um, entrepreneurs are invited to promote their businesses, work with one another and showcase themselves. So it's kind of having that support network around to find the next set of jobs to get the next step up on your career and level up and also even start your own business. That is that is great. That is great to, to really know that this report system exists after individuals graduate. I can tell you this is maybe one of the most important things for any other person who graduates from a college and not even colleges have this structure that you guys have. Um, you know, I, I serve in many alumni networks and they try to figure it out even how to get uh, people who graduated many years ago. They only do it for fundraising, but I see and I hear that you guys do it for more than that, uh, which is really important, uh, especially nowadays that a lot of people need direction on how to pivot their careers. Um, right. So it, this is really a support system that any other individual could have as they attend the technical colleges. So thank you, Jennifer, for sharing this with us. Um, thank you for giving me the time. Sure, sure. And, uh, you know, we are running out of time. So as and it happens every time, I think we will have to really extend our time for yeah. our presentations moving forward. But um, I wanted to make sure that all of you who are uh, today with us, um, See. So for, for all of you that are uh, attending today, I just wanted to make sure that you all know that we are really glad that we were able to provide you this information, but we also are excited about the questions. And, and this is the right moment to, to ask some questions to our panelists. And before we do that, I'm gonna put them all on the spot <laughs> because I want people to see them because of course, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the technical world, it's so complex nowadays and MS Teams has been a, a, an incredible partner of us doing these events, but unfortunately it is really complex to produce one of these things and we couldn't really connect all of our panelists into the screen. So um, I'm going to ask uh, the attendees to just go and ask your questions. We already have some of them, um, uh, which is more for, for me, which is about the, the deck and the answer is yes. We will be sending the deck to all of the uh, individuals who attended the, attended or registered for today's event. Uh, but I would love to hear more questions about the technical colleges. While we get questions in the queue, I'm just gonna uh, move around our, um, our, our, how you call that, our, our virtual queue and, and introduce you all of, uh, all of you to our panelists. So the first one was Lynn Goldman. Lynn, you're going to be live in a second, uh, just so you could say hi. And, and I want to thank you for being here today and making sure that this was possible for our students in our community. Well, thank you again, John, and I thank my co-presenters. I'm I'm really fortunate to work with such phenomenal people as as these three ladies. I would like to just recap something that, that was said. I want to point out that we we are a public institution and we charge $2.80 an hour oh for our programs, which is an amazing feat when people realize that. There is a supply fee which varies from program to program, um, but it is very inexpensive to attend. I want to reiterate something that Maud said, which is that we are part of the Florida prepaid system. So if you were originally going on that track and you're not sure what you want to do, 
you can use a portion of those dollars to attend the technical college. And I want to point out something that Jennifer just referred to with ISIS. When she won that scholarship to the Culinary Institute of America, it was equivalent to a hundred and twenty thousand wow. dollar scholarship. She attended Sheridan Technical College for free because she was what we call a dual enrolled share time student. So other than I think it was twenty five dollars to register to go to Skills USA. She got the education she got and ultimately that scholarship of one hundred and twenty thousand um, dollars for free. So there are lots and lots and lots of opportunities that are available and I can't state enough how we have so many phenomenal teachers that do link to each of the industries as Nicole stated. So thank you and thank you, Lynn. I mean, you are a uh, 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 a person who has so much wealth of knowledge about this that we are These so grateful. Too. And then everyone else in this panel is true. Uh, and I wanted to go around, but before we go around, we have a couple of questions. Uh, one is from my student, um, Andrew Regis. Uh, what specific classes should one take for making and fixing computers, such as desktop computer and laptops? I guess he's talking about hardware and how a person could get trained to technical colleges. Uh, I don't know if any of you could um, answer that question. Nicole, Maude, it would Lynn? Be, well, we do have the Network Support Services uh, Program, okay? And um, what's great about that program is it, even around our campuses, those students can do internships. They do NAF internships, which I forgot what NAF stands for right now. I'm sorry. But our students, Academy Foundation. Thank you. So our students, you know, they can be seen or have been seen around campus working with our staff <laughs> to do some of the hands on things that need to be done. So network support services would definitely be the program to look at. Definitely. Uh, there's another question. Um, anyone wants to compliment on that or you guys are good? We also have a computer systems and information technology program as well that does uh, uh, tailored to the hardware portion of uh, IT as well. It's OK, your baby's up. Yeah. <laughs> Life in COVID. <laughs> right, right. So we have we have a, a, another several questions. Um, a couple of several questions, I'm sorry. Uh, there is, is there an ESE program in the technology school? We do offer disability services for students. I do apologize for the baby crying in the background. That's okay. <laughs> offer... I'll, I'll jump in, Maude, Maud, if you want. Um, and, and certainly we all understand it, this is not an office space. This is a home. Um, but we do have a lot of different programs each of the colleges has to work with students with adults with disabilities to help them receive the training that they need um, and link them up to jobs um, in careers. Uh, the staff and the teachers who work with the, those students are absolutely phenomenal and there's one success story after another. Awesome. There's another question. Are technical colleges, are technical college programs connected to four year college programs in any way? Yes, we articulate most of our programs articulate to the state college system, which would be Broward College or Miami Dade College. Um, so credits go from our programs to theirs. For instance, our culinary arts program is only 15 credits short of an associate's degree over in the, at the college system. So we work very hard as Broward County Public Schools to make sure those articulation agreements are in place. So that another one would be our students who come out of our LPN, our Licensed Practical Nursing Program, which is a one year program, skip a year of the RN program, the Registered Nurse Program at Broward College. So when they leave us, they could go and in one year become an RN. Awesome, Lynn, thank you so much. Um, I guess this is, this is actually an exciting question because I think now that a lot of things are going to change with education and we're going to need to reinvent how we um, access post-secondary education. I guess you guys are ahead of it because you could do a career in a year, but um, there is a question about the grade. So uh, I believe it's a student who's asking, what grade do you have to be in to be part of any of the programs at the technical college? You could start as early as high school, as early as middle school, or, 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 or what's, what's, the, what's the range that you should have? And I don't know if Lynn or 
Nicole wants I'm to answer. Okay. I can answer, but I want one of my colleagues to be able to answer. That. Okay, okay I'll, I'll, I'll say a little bit and, and Maud, feel free to jump in. Um, with the dual enrollment classes, it's a great way for um, our area high school students to, you know, uh, share their time with us. So uh, 11th and 12th grade is when they can do dual enrollment. And the, uh, another good thing about that aspect of it is that if the high school student is unaware of what they want to do, that's a good way for them to get a feel for these careers and it's free. <laughs> they pay nothing, no tuition, no book costs or anything like that. So um, 11th and uh, 11th grade would be when they could start. Ma, do you have any? Ma, it's uh, uh, it's busy, hands full. Uh, okay. I don't want to. Yeah, so, go ahead, so Lynn. just to end, and that most of our programs are eleventh grade. I would just add something like commercial vehicle driving or the fire academy. There is an age requirement. I think it's age eighteen um, to be enrolled in those programs. But otherwise, um, as Nicole just said, eleventh grade. Uh, I have a question in terms of the alumni. Not to um, make sure that we cover all the all the aspects. And we bring Jenny for it so everyone could see your curls. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, really important. Um, how big is the the network? And I know you guys have a um, a magazine. So mm -hmm. if you could share with us uh, a little bit about that and how students that are now in high school, and we will share that link with the students. But the students that are in high school or middle school or young adults that are. Uh, disconnected for any reasons that they're not thinking. Oh, technical colleges, no depth. Great support, career in a year, how it started, but what's going to happen after? So, how big is the network, and what are the things that you guys have besides what you presented that will be a, a great asset um, as you graduate from a technical college here in Broward? Um, well, currently the network probably is around just over nine thousand. I want to say of where. It's hard to gauge. It's obviously much larger than that when you think about how many students have graduated from these three institutions over the course of 50 plus years at this point. Um, but when you talk about contacts, we have at least over 9,000 legitimate emails or phone numbers or some way to communicate or contact the alumni that we have. And one of the biggest resources, which you mentioned previously, is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is an amazing resource for us. If you go onto LinkedIn, you can actually go. I have created a page for each of our schools, and any of our alumni that are also on LinkedIn are kind of grab. They're grabbed by the LinkedIn filtering system and put into that page, so you can visit. Atlantic McFadder or Sheridan's LinkedIn page. Go to the side, see where it says alumni. You click on alumni and it will just populate and you'll see all of the alumni and where they work and where they live and not their actual addresses, but <laughs> you know, the location, the location. Is in the United States that they live in. And you can actually reach out to them there, which is one of the biggest tools that we use with our other alumni um, when they want to make a connection when they want to you know, connect with somebody and network their way into a different job or you know, get some information that way. So yeah, it's it's getting bigger every single year. Awesome. Um, we have a lot of questions and I know we have um, we have we went over our time and I want to thank our panelists. I know you guys have other things to do. I just want to give a couple of minutes to answer the, the three questions that we have here. Uh, one is, um, do technical colleges um, offer programs in the summer? Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes. perfect. So we answered that one. You see, that was quick, seconds. <laughs> um, do you have any programs in health science? Oh, yes. yes. Who lots. wants to answer? Numerous. Who wants to answer to that? Lots, lots of programs. Lots of I think, programs. I think we have. I think we have over 20 programs in health science. We have everything from surgical tech to licensed practical nursing, medical assisting, dental lab, optometric technology, uh, pharmacy, central sterile processing, lobotomy, EKG, yeah. optometric assisting, orthopedic te technology. Are you reading? 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot. <laughs> Mud had it ready. I, I love had it. it. <laughs> uh, so uh, the last question that I have here in the queue, and then we will close. Um, it says, I know this was covered, but just to verify, a student under 24 can verify their Florida residency through their parents. Correct. So if you're 23 years of age or younger, you will need your parents' information to claim Florida residency. Mm -hmm. And that would also go for financial aid as well. Awesome. Now, there are exceptions to that rule. So there's a long list. So you would have to um, speak to your program counselor and advisor for those details. But yes, overall, you would have to get your parents' information in order to claim residency. And I promise this will be the last one, but I guess this student is so desperate to enroll in your schools. Um, what are the requirements, or oh, any of the students, because there has been a lot of students' questions today. What are the requirements to do the dual enrollment in 11th grade? What is the deadline to apply for next year? The, the person that's responsible for dual enrollment is um, Nicole Alexander for Sheridan Tech, but each school has a respective person who's assigned for dual enrollment. I believe we are in the process of taking applications at this moment. Um, and so there are there is a testing requirement, there is a GPA requirement, and your counselor, your home high school counselor does have to sign off saying that you are on track for graduation and that they would allow you to do dual enrollment. So there is a process involved with that. But yes, we are accepting applications at the moment. Awesome. So I would encourage that student to find out which program, which college, and then reach out to their home school counselor this coming week to get that ball rolling. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you so much for your knowledge. Thank you so much for your energy. Lynn, you disconnected once and then after that nothing happened. So great. Um, I'm really happy that we were able to do this. I feel uh, that we need to do more of this with the specific industries. I look forward to that conversation, uh, hopefully in the next couple of months after the summer and we go back into the new normal. Uh, I, I want to thank again, Lynn, uh, specifically for hearing my idea and now connecting to your team or to the team from the technical colleges, Maude, Jennifer, Nicole, thank you so much for the wealth of knowledge that you have given to our attendees today. Our foundation is definitely determined to make sure that people know about the options that they have. And, and this is an incredible opportunity and an incredible option for any student around the country, not just here in Broward. Uh, no debt, uh, not losing a job after a pandemic, uh, not suffering for wages lost. Um, you know, a network of alumni ready to help you to get into the job market a, or open your own business, a, you know, financial aid uh, to help you to get into programs like the ones that we learn from alumni and, and just an incredible team of people and individuals. So we are really glad that we were able to do this uh, up to the next one, hopefully soon. And thank you everyone who attended today's event. Uh, we are working on passing all the recording of our webinars during the pandemic to our YouTube channel that is going to launch next month. Uh, so be on, on the look for that on our social media. And again, thank you so much to the Broward Technical Colleges and their leaders today for making this possible. Have a wonderful afternoon and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.